Hello and welcome to the American Migraine Foundation Facebook Live. Uh, I am Dr. Thomas Burke. I am an assistant professor of neurology in the Division of Headache uh, at the NYU Langone um, um, Medical Center. Welcome to uh, everybody who's interested in this fascinating and difficult topic. And I was actually I actually chose this to talk about. I wanted to really challenge myself uh, because I know that um, everybody really is talking about all of the new migraine medications, um, the CGRP antagonists, new treatments that are going to be available very soon as well, uh, GPANs, as well as some treatments that are kind of um, oldies but goodies that can now uh, be somewhat difficult to obtain as well. So I really want to um, obviously focus on uh, all of the new CGRP antagonists. Uh, and I um, want to uh, discuss, first of all, how we get medications uh, paid for in this uh, great country of ours, how, how the medical system works. Uh, and based on that, I definitely want to talk about um, the best ways of getting these medications specifically. So thank you for everyone who's joining. Just to reintroduce myself, my name is Dr. Thomas Burke. I am a neurologist and headache specialist at uh, the NYU Langone Medical Center uh, in the Division of Headache. So um, to give you some perspective, I'm on the other side of the line. I'm, you know, um, you know, some people uh, have coined this term migraine warrior. You can be a migraine warrior fighting every day having migraine. And uh, there are definitely those uh, such as myself. And I'll tell you the truth, many, many people um, and on medical staffs across the country that migraine warriors in trying to get these medications into the hands of our patients. So uh, let's talk briefly first as an overview about how medications in general are uh, paid for uh, in the United States healthcare system. And based on that, how to understand the best ways of getting these medications. So um, what typically happens is you have some kind of insurance, either it's commercial insurance or it's insurance from the government. Rarely uh, do you pay out of pocket. That's just how it works in this country. If you do pay out of pocket, um, theoretically, you can access any medication that you want as long as you have a doctor's prescription. So uh, you theoretically could get Botox if there's a doctor that uh, wants to give you Botox and you pay for it out of pocket, right? You don't necessarily, you wouldn't have had to have gone through uh, multiple other preventive medicines or anything like that because you're just paying for it out of pocket. All of those steps, all those additional things, prior authorizations and whatnot, they come because of um, the uh, health system and the insurances and uh, you know the what we call payers. Um, the people that you pay, so they pay for your medicines. Now, uh, let's say you do have um, either commercial or uh, government uh, based insurance, uh, how does how do things work? So uh, typically you will have medications that are on a formulary and those medications will have some copay, you're probably paying something for it. And um, the things that are on different tiers of their formulary may have different prices. In general, most new medications are, even if they're on a formulary, are going to be expensive and many of them won't even be on formulary. Some of them, many of our migraine medications, um, are, are especially the new ones, uh, you know, need to be um, stepped through. So that terminology means that you have to have tried other medicines first. And then once you've tried and you've been documented to have had those medicines and either you've quote failed those medicines, which means that you haven't uh, you know, completely improved or, or you haven't had enough success with uh, the medications or you uh, weren't able to tolerate them, you can consider that a step and you've passed that step. So um, for instance, most people are familiar with uh, Botox. 
Uh, Botox has been around, it's been FDA approved uh, since 2010. And the best way to understand how to get the new medications is to kind of understand uh, how most people have been getting Botox for years. Um, typically, you will see a neurologist or a headache specialist. You will have been tried on uh, a preventive medication, typically an oral preventive medicine, in one of a number of classes anti seizure medicines, antidepressants, uh, antihypertensives. And what you um, will have experienced. Uh, will determine whether you're going to be stepping through and being able to have Botox. In other words, you've tried one or two, in some instances, three medications based on your insurance company. And um, if, you have, um, if you haven't had uh, improvement to the extent where you still experience uh, what we define chronic migraine as, which is 15 or more headache days per month, the majority of those with migraine symptoms, uh, lasting four or more hours a day, then you can, you know, have that documented and you, your doctor will uh, uh, ask your insurance company through a prior authorization to have Botox. So similarly with the new medications, every insurance is different. Most insurances are requiring that you have had, that you have to have tried some uh, oral preventive first. Um, some uh, are requiring that if you fit that criteria of chronic migraine that you have uh, had to try Botox first as well. So for instance, I'll, I'll give an example because I think that's the best way to really understand this. Uh, let's say you're somebody who uh, initially when you were diagnosed with migraine, uh, you were given Topamax, right? The number one most commonly prescribed migraine preventive medication in the world. And let's say you weren't able to tolerate it. You tried it for six weeks <clears throat> and it caused cognitive issues or uh, mood issues or something else, numbness, tingling, etc. cetera. Uh, let's say your doctor moved on to um, a beta blocker like propanolol. Um, and then your, your doctor would say, okay, let's, let's go on and, uh, you know, let's see, because you still have so many, you know, headaches, uh, Botox would be the option. Uh, now, if your doctor would say, let's actually try some of these new medications, um, almost across the board, you will need a prior authorization. Something has to be done. So, um, how does this work? That's something that typically is done on our end. It's us, it's our staff. Um, just like it had been done, you know, for years with Botox. Sometimes uh, just sending the medication automatically starts in an automated system, a prior authorization process. And some of the new CGRPs have that set up. Once the prior authorization process is underway, something interesting is uh, happening with the new CGRP medications, right? So we're talking about Amivig, Mgality, and Ajovi. And what happens is all three manufacturers are trying to cover the bridge, this, this gap area where your doctor has written a prescription for you they have started a prior authorization for you, and you haven't yet been denied that medication. They are trying to say that even if it goes for, you know, an entire year, 12 months, they will cover that medication. All three have different ways where they're trying to do that, uh, which is uh, obviously a very nice thing. Um, and it allows you to get your medication sooner because sometimes these prior authorizations can take weeks. Sometimes they can even take months. Um, so what may happen is you'll get your medication very shortly after the doctor prescribes it. That being said, sometimes even after you've been given this medication, you may be denied. And uh, if you are denied, your doctor can then appeal and Many times, many of these bridge programs 
will allow uh, you to continue on the medication, getting it subsidized by the manufacturer while the uh, doctor is appealing this denial. That being said, why would the insurance companies deny it? Sometimes they deny it out hand, you know, uh, for, for no good reason. You've been on every medication known to man for, for migraine and they're still denying it. That happens sometimes. Um, but usually an appeal will allow for you the medication one way or the other. Sometimes it's because you really haven't been on the medications that the insurance companies require you be on, namely those oral preventives uh, and in some instances Botox with chronic migraine. So all of these things have to be documented. Sometimes you can get away with saying that you can't take certain medications and your doctor can write a letter for you saying that you basically only need to have taken one of these medicines, um, you know, or you can't use, you know, a certain class because you're already on an antidepressant, your blood pressure is too low, etc. So as of right now, if you have commercial insurance, theoretically, you should be able to enroll in these bridge programs. Now, how do you enroll in these bridge programs? How does this happen? How, you know, how, how do the manufacturers know about you um, and, and uh, enroll you in these, in these programs while the prior authorization and the denials are, are going on? The way that they do that is either with AMAVIG, you sign up for something online and uh, there is uh, something called the Imavig uh, access card, and, and that's how you do it for them. For a Jovi, there is a card that you'll probably get from your doctor's office, or you can print it out online and bring that to your pharmacy. And the, um, the, the, the manufacturer will know about you and should be able to enroll you if you have uh, gone through that process and brought that card to the pharmacy, when Galati, what I'm being told is that it happens automatically when it's e-prescribed. And uh, as of yet, I haven't seen that that isn't true. Um, I always am a little skeptical with, you know, when things are claimed to be automatic, but um, it, things have, have, have worked so far. Um, for, for uh, these uh, different uh, CGRP medications. Now, I'm somebody who my uh, practice of uh, headache medicine, I actually take uh, just about every insurance out there. I take a lot of Medicare and managed Medicaid. So these are government insurance programs. This is where access becomes a really difficult issue because in uh, with these government programs, you actually are not allowed to enroll in uh, these bridge programs. Um, it's illegal for manufacturers, um, for drug companies to subsidize the cost of medications for uh, uh, these government programs. So if you're somebody over 65 and you have Medicare, and Medicare has been giving you Botox for a while and you're still not doing so great. And your doctor says, why not try one of these uh, new medications? You could actually be somebody that has a more difficult uh, access to these medications than many other people. So what do you do then? Number one is you can always still hold out for the approval to go through for a prior authorization approval or uh, if it gets denied by the insurance <clears throat> for, for the denial to be appealed, you may have to wait a while, and that's always a problem. Many of the manufacturers will have a foundation pro program, which uh, if you meet certain criteria, which typically uh, relate to income, uh, you may be able to get vacation completely subsidized and free necessarily through the insurance company. So that's how they go around it. Um, but just because you fit, um, you know, they're, they're, they're basically like charity criteria. 
Um, and that's another way that, that you can uh, access these medications. It can be very difficult sometimes and arduous to actually get into these foundation programs. That being said, the most important thing that you have to realize is that we are on the front lines of these battles uh, for you. And many of us are patients ourselves. Many of us take these medications, Botox or uh, the new CGRPs. And we have to advocate not only for all of you, but for ourselves also. And our office staff, they are inundated with uh, requests for prior authorizations for these medications. Um, and we will do everything that we can to get these medications uh, into your hands as quickly uh, as we possibly can in the appropriate circumstance. Which is why it's important to realize, why well, I preface this whole thing by saying, in some instances, you may be somebody who needs to have been on other medicines first. Uh, a few words wrapping up, specifically talking about access. Um, it's possible that your insurance company may require Botox before you undergo the, the, um, you know, the, the, the CGRP medications. There is no medical re reason for you to have to stop Botox. And theoretically, if you understand the pathophysiology of migraine, the way that migraine actually happens in your brain, you understand that, you'll understand that Botox is a way of decreasing CGRP's production in the brain, and the CGRP antagonists block CGRP in the brain. And they can definitely work hand in hand. Many patients of mine, I'll tell you, that using both treatments can be the best option. Some insurance companies will say we will pay for only one expensive drug and not more than one. And it's an absolute shame. Um, and sometimes you can or your doctor can convince the insurance company to give it to you anyway, but sometimes you can't. And uh, you're kind of stuck with, um, you know, that movie, uh, um, what was it? Um, Sophie's Choice. Which of these two medications, which of these two treatments that could give you uh, benefit and, and, and hope and uh, could significantly impact your quality of life? Which one of these do you want to give away? You know, it's, 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 it's sad. Um, unfortunately, many insurance companies are not um, that open and uh, about which um, medications need to be stepped through for the CGRPs. Their policies aren't that transparent, at least not right now. Many insurance programs don't have set policies right now anyway. So uh, that's, that's definitely uh, an important part of it. One last important thing. If you are under the age of 18, Unfortunately, insurance over it because the studies were only done in patients 18 and above, so they have an excuse not to give it to you. And number two, um, the uh, um, uh, all of these programs will will also not enroll you um, because uh, for for you to be able to enter either the uh, bridge program, you have to have started a prior authorization. They won't even let you do a prior authorization if you're under 18. So that's a non-starter. And the other part of it is the foundations won't give it to you because they're only for 18 or above. Um, it can be very tricky. Luckily, many of us were given in um, samples of many of these medications. And sometimes if your doctor has a sample, it might be worth at a minimum 
trying uh, the medication if the doctor thinks that it's appropriate. And then maybe writing a letter of medical necessity to the insurance company, seeing if you can appeal at that point and say, listen, all of these medications have been tried by this patient of mine who is 16 or 17 years old. Um, there's no reason medically for this patient not to be able to be given um, a, a CGRP antagonist. Please cover this for this patient. It is medically necessary. Sometimes it works and sometimes it just doesn't.